Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about natural sorting, or you know what what people think about when they sort, and how you can implement that on a computer. Uh, anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so uh, there are a few utilities on the command line that actually do this for you. Uh, so I'm just going to show a quick example using the command line, and then I'm going to show you how you do it in Python. Uh, so let's say we had a few files, like one, I don't know, who txt and uh, let's actually make a whole bunch of those xargs replace touch foo.txt okay so we have a bunch of files here and when we run ls uh, ls sorts by default um let's just do cat so it shows us but it sorts lexicographically which means that it just takes the character values and so you get kind of this nonsense where 10 sorts before one. And you can fix this by zero padding your files or, or whatever, but sometimes you don't control these and you wanna make them displayed naturally later. Um, and you'll see if we pipe ls into sort here, it's still going to do this kind of uh, unfortunate sorting here. Now there is an option to sort, which is sort dash little n, uh, which will give it a natural sort and it'll sort, you know, as a numeric uh, support sort would. And kind of the way you can think of a natural sort is it's going to split the string into the number components and the non-number components and treat the numbers as integers. Uh, that way, you know, even if you have a, uh, I don't know, 300 foo dot text, uh, it sorts in the middle here, but if we sort with a natural sort, it's going to sort at the end because this number, despite sorting lexicographically between three and four, uh, sorts at the end if you consider it as a number. Okay, so that's the concept of a natural sort. Now, how do we do this in Python? Uh, Python has you know, exactly the same problem here. So if we do uh, some list that is stir i for i in range 100, um, you know, we have all these numbers here. And if we were to sort them, do an in place sort there, uh, you'll see that we end up with 0, 1, 10, 11, 12, which you know, is not what you want. Uh, so we actually want to sort these by their integer values. And we might have strings like arbitrary strings like this that we'll also want to sort as well. And let's just uh, get this in here, dot split lines. Okay, so we have list two, which if we sort as well, we're going to end up with, you know, not, not the result that we want. Uh, the trick that I've seen for this is to use regular expressions to split apart this string by its numeric components. And the easiest way to do that is to make a uh, number regex and specifically matching 0 to 9 plus. Now we're actually going to turn this into a capture group and there's a subtle reason for this in a second which I'll show you. Uh, we're also going to use, it doesn't actually matter here, we could use ASCII mode which uh, these, are, these are always going to be ASCII digits anyway so it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm going to show you what happens with the non-capture group just because uh, I find it interesting. Um, but we'll get to that in a second. So we're going to be able to use this regular expression to match all of the numeric components inside of a string, and that'll allow us to split it apart. Uh, I actually did this recently to sort wheels on PyPI, uh, because annoyingly, if you go to, for instance, pypi.org slash simple slash, uh, I think pyaml is a good example here, and we scroll all the way down the bottom, you'll see that we have the Python 3.10 wheels and then the Python 3.6 wheels, whereas they probably should sort down by the Python 3.9 ones. But you know, I didn't implement warehouse, so I don't have any say there. Uh, but if we look at, for instance, dumb PyPI, which is a uh, PyPI, a static PyPI generator, uh, I have made sure that they, uh, well, dumb PyPI actually tries to sort the opposite direction that um, IPI does and that it puts the newest and best first. So you'll see 6.0310, then 3.938, and then you know older versions 310, 3.938. Um, so but it, it's using a natural sort here to make sure that these sort in the proper order. Okay, anyway, back back to the actual video here. Uh, so what you'll do is you will split apart the original string based on this number regex. And so you can do num dot split. Let's just take this value for instance to show you what happens. And it'll split it into string and number components. Now, this isn't all you have to do here. You also have to interpret this as a number. And just to show you what would happen if we didn't use that capturing group, it eliminated the number group here. So there's a 
<laughs> and I think this is a really confusing behavior. I mean, the docs cover it, and so it's it's clear from that. But uh, re.split only keeps the components of the split if you put it into a capturing group. <laughs> it just seems surprising to me, but that's the way it goes. Actually, what happens if you do, what happens if you ca double capture it? Does it put it in there twice? 300 foo.txt. <laughs> okay, I mean, it makes sense, but it's just kind of weird. Okay, unrelated. Too much of a tangent. Okay, so once you've split the uh, string into its components like this, you want to interpret the number parts as numbers. So we're going to actually make a function that uses this to build a short key. Uh, let's call it natural key, which is going to take a string, and it's going to return a list of integers or strings. Uh, and I think this is actually going to cache, but well, we'll write out the code and then I'll rerun it with uh, future annotations enabled. Uh, so we're going to use this same split as before, but we are going to return int s if s dot is digit. Uh, that way we will convert it into an integer if it is if it is a digit. Otherwise, we will keep it as the same string for our, oh, we should say part rather than s. And part if part dot is digit, else part for part in num dot split s. Oh, it didn't crash. I am surprised that it allowed me to use a type annotation without the proper features. Anyway, uh, so if we call natural key on, you know, uh, 1 to 30 B, you'll see that we get uh, you know, string components, then integer components, then string components, then integer components. And this isn't a coincidence. Uh, it'll always be striped in this particular way. So there will always be a string, then an integer, then a string, then an integer, then a string, then an integer. Unfortunately, there isn't a great way to represent this in the type system, but that's how it's always going to turn out. So even if you have like text in front of it, you'll see that we still get string first, then integer second. So the, the integer will always be in the even number columns here. And this is important when sorting, because if you try and compare a string against a number uh, in Python 3 and above, and you know a normal, <laughs> reasonable behavior, uh, they're not going to be comparable. So they have to line up exactly. Uh, now, when we go to actually write our sort here, so let's say that we have list2 from above, we can do list2.sort and say key equals natural key. Now, this isn't completely what you want to do, but it, it will work in this particular case. Uh, so you'll see here that, oh, that's list. I wanted to do list2. I mean, list worked fine too, but list2 is the more interesting one. Uh, you'll see that it has now sorted these properly, put 300 at the end and uh, put 10 ahead of it. Now, there is one subtle bug with using this directly, and you probably want to make a slightly more um, deterministic key here. And that is that this is no longer a, uh, a well, <laughs> it is a stable sort because of the way um, Python does sorting, but it's not quite a deterministic sort. So if we were to add another value to list two, that is 0, 0300 foo.txt, um, which I would expect to sort ahead of uh, this value here. But if we call sort on this right now, it's actually going to keep its uh, existing order because these, these produce the same key. Now, the fix to this is to uh, return a tuple here for your, your key and make sure that you always include the original value here. That way, if it needs to break ties, it'll use the original string for lexicographical sorting after or lexicographic yeah i don't i don't know what the actual word is um it'll it'll use the original string to break any ties here so you'll see here that uh oh that didn't do what i want to do <laughs> oh because i didn't call the function <laughs> yeah there we go uh so you'll see now that the 0 300 sorts before the 300 even if it's at the end um so we can reverse reverse sort it and then sort it back and we'll see that it's still in the same place Oops, <laughs> there we go, yeah. Uh, so this will allow you to break ties. Now, another related thing to natural sorting is a case insensitive natural sort. And for that, you'll actually wanna do a similar thing to this, but you'll wanna use the lower case value here. So you'll, you'll do, uh, let's add another thing to this, uh, list2.append, uh, say 80, well, we want something that also fits into here. Let's do foo.txt, uh, foo1.txt or something like that. And just do our original sort here. 
you'll see that, uh, well, it happened to sort properly because of the, um, well, actually, no, it didn't sort properly. This one should be first because the dot should come before the one. Uh, and that's because it lexicographically sorted here. But if we treat it as a lowercase value here, and then we want to lexicographically sort next by the lowercase value, then finally, if we need to break any ties, we'll use the case sensitiveness. Uh, and we'll see here that, oh, well then, hmm. I guess the one is earlier than the dot. Okay, so I'm slightly wrong there. But anyway, this is how you would do a case insensitive like, uh, natural sort. Anyway, hopefully you found this interesting. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.